Whether you are handling money, paying bills, or traveling from one place to another, a few alternatives can make these things much easier. Presented here are some suggestions of ways to manage your personal information when your vision is not working well for you. Pathways to Independence Personal Information Management Organizing a Calendar It's important to keep track of appointments. There is a variety of large print calendars available for this purpose. Doctor's appointment. Okay. There are devices you can use to record a calendar, listing each month separately. A computer can be used to set up a calendar. You can set the font for a large size or use a voice program. There are large and small braille wall and desk calendars. A Rolodex or file box with removable cards and brailled tabbed cards for the months is good for adding notes and events. Networking with other blind people and experimenting with various methods will result in finding out what works best for you. Identifying and handling money. Being able to identify money is another important part of being independent. Coins can be differentiated by their edges, their size, and their centers. Dimes and quarters have rough edges, while nickels and pennies have smooth edges. If at first you find it confusing to tell the difference between a penny and a nickel, study them carefully. Since both of these coins have smooth edges, check the center of the coins. The penny has a portion that is rough to the fingertip and bumpy when examined by the fingernail, while the nickel does not. Dimes and quarters, while both having rough edges, are very different in size and thickness. Current dollar coins have varied features, and 50 cent pieces are rare these days. Once you get used to identifying coins non-visually, you'll figure out ways of keeping them straight that work for you. Paper currency is all the same size and shape. Keep bills of different denominations in separate places in your billfold, or fold them in a different way from one another. Leave ones straight, fold fives in half the long way, tens in half the short way, and twenties in fourths. Keep bills larger than twenties in a different part of your billfold. When receiving cash back, be sure to keep track of paper currency denominations as you receive them. One way to do this is to fold the money as it is counted out to you. Some banks now have talking automatic teller machines. They have an earphone jack on them that accepts standard earbuds so that your transactions are private. There are verbal instructions for how to operate the machine. And some keys and slots are labeled in braille. When your cash comes out, fold it as a unit according to its denomination and separate the bills later when you can do so inconspicuously. Be sure to take your receipt from the machine, even if you don't intend to keep it. If you have a shredder, you may wish to dispose of it that way. In the meantime, mark it as trash, so you won't run across it later and wonder what it is. A small tear down the middle is one way of doing this. Although you will most likely do some transactions using cash, most things now are done by check, plastic card, or some electronic means. It is crucial that you find alternatives to eyesight for handling these media. For instance, a template can be made for your checks, or you can purchase a generic one that will work for most checks. The template, which is the size and shape of the check, is placed on top of it and has cutouts for each piece of information you need to write in. 
Some people prefer to use checks that have raised lines on them to indicate where information is to be placed. These are generally larger than those ordinarily issued by banks. If you use carbon checks, you will have a hard copy print record of transactions you make by check. When using bank or credit cards, you will want to study their non-visual features. Slickness, square or rounded corners, raised logos, configuration of numbers, etc. to identify them or mark them in some way that doesn't interfere with their use. When signing a credit card receipt, you may ask the salesperson to place your card under where you are to sign, or use a signature guide, which is a small template with a cutout for that purpose. There are many non-visual ways of keeping track of your financial or other records. A computer with a screen reader is one of these. Using the bank's online bill pay program and electronic statements can give you access to your information. Some banks also have over-the-phone automated teleteller service, which allows you to check balances or transfer money from one account to another. If you do your banking using paper statements and paper ledgers, you will want to find a live reader, someone you trust who can assist you by reading information to you and writing down anything that needs to be written. When paying bills by regular mail, you can use a computer with screen reading or enlargement program software to type and print out envelopes. There are also templates which you can place over an envelope to help you write the address by hand. Another option is to direct your reader to fill in the appropriate information and address the envelopes. Whether you are paying bills or balancing your checkbook, you may need a calculator to assist you. A computer with a calculator and a voice output or enlargement program will work. There are also talking calculators available. You will find these sold through some catalogs and specialized equipment stores. Managing information. Whether reading or writing, there are both high and low tech tools for getting the job done. Slate and stylus, pen and paper, writing templates, live and electronic readers, magnifiers, closed circuit TVs, recording machines, and computers with adaptive software may all play a role, sometimes singly, other times in combination with one another. Folding a piece of paper accordion style creates tactile lines to write on. You may use paper with raised or bold ink lines on it, a writing template, or a string board. Much of the time, blind people use computers with adaptive software to input text and printers and braille embossers for output. To keep track of hard copy printed material, many blind people label documents and folders with braille using a slate and stylus. Those with low vision may mark documents and folders with large print labels. For handwritten materials, a live reader, someone you trust to assist you, is generally the best option. Whether your reader is volunteer or paid, it is important that you determine the agenda and define the boundaries and expectations since that person will have some access to your private business. Screen applicants carefully. Conduct a short reading session with sample materials you want read and see how the applicant responds to your direction. Voting. There are several options available that will help you continue to vote in elections. You can opt to vote absentee, which allows you to have a friend or relative help. You can take someone with you to the polling site. A volunteer at the polling site can help you. Please Talking your voting machines in each precinct now make it possible for a blind person to vote privately. Contact your local election commissioner to learn more about this. 
For the sighted and the blind, information management is an ever-changing terrain. With a few skills and networking with your blind brothers and sisters, this too is an area in which you can remain independent. Written by Barbara Lose. Volunteers, Darlene Dotson, Crystal Ferguson, Michael Floyd, Terry Haney, Sahar Husseini, Deanna Jesse, and Cheryl Livingston. Narrated by Shane Burrish. Special thanks to Avant Cards, Lincoln, Nebraska. Ideal Grocery, Lincoln, Nebraska. Wells Fargo Bank, Lincoln, Nebraska. Producer, Kent Taylor, Taylor Productions. Production Coordinator, Deanna Jesse, Program Specialist for Older Blind Services. Pathways to Independence, a production of the Nebraska Commission for the Blind and visually impaired, www.ncbvi.ne.gov.